Yeah, I was old. I mean, I was. We used to rob uh, when I was like 16, 17 years old. I used to hang out with some older dudes for like 27, 28, 30. And they were stick-up boys. A lot of them was using drugs. So that's how they got their drugs. They were robbing drug dealers. Back then, the stick-up boys had the upper hand because they was like bandits, roving gangs. And dope dealers was like, you know, a mom and pop. Maybe one, two outfit. One dude stand on the corner, collect the money, the other one go get the drugs and bring them back, you know. So they was vulnerable, you know. And so the old heads used to get me to uh, get the up on the dudes because they was well known, you know. People see their faces, they would run before they can get to heroin. So I was new face, younger than them, and so they would send me down there, you know, and uh, act like I'm going to buy some dope and pull the gun on them, and then they'll come at me. Mm. Do you think that they took advantage of, like, because you 16 to 27-year-olds, do you think they took advantage of your mom, like, manipulate? Were you manipulated? Do you feel like you were manipulated? No. You wanted no. to do that. Right. I was, I was like... For my time, I was older, you know. Mentally. Yeah. And I wasn't using drugs. They were using drugs. Got so it. My cut other drugs, I would take them and save them and sell them. You know. Then I realized how the money was easy and all that. I, I stopped robbing people and I started. But what I interrupted my career was, and this was in the uh, 70s, that I caught a, a manslaughter charge. It was homicide, then they broke it down to manslaughter. And they, what I get, five years? Yeah, five years. It was a homicide broken down to a manslaughter. Right. So, and what, how old were you at this time? 17. 17. Um, now, I want to see how to word this because, you know, the people tend to attack Queens Flip, and I, you know, I'm trying to, <laughs> should I, you know, should I go old oh, Queens Flip or should, you know, I'm just trying to. You know, you mean the exit so they can no, attack no, you? No, 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 no money, new no money, new <laughs> stuff. And yeah, let them attack me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. ask any questions. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm, I'm not asking. You know, no. you know, me and G Money, man, it's just I always get attacked on the internet because they think that I'm trying to glorify <laughs> some nonsense. But no, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> What happened? What 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 led to that? What what yeah, happened was, at that uh, time? Transaction. 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 Yeah. And guns would pull out, you know, and that was kids about my age. He ended up dead. You know. Got yeah. it. And uh, not my backyard, but he fell into the next backyard. Mm. So, being still, I was on my turf, you know, and it looked like, you know. You automatically, you know, he's out of he's out of bounds, so he automatically wrong, you know. Back then, the system, he was just a statistic to the system. You know, the lawyer and all that. It was just a uh, business as usual, you know. Mm. That was your first situation? What for homicide? Mm hmm Yeah, that was the first one. Do you now at the time, I mean you were you were seventeen years old, um, a transaction going wrong. Weapons were pulled out, you came out and you know and, but do you feel like do you ever think about these things? Or you had time to think about them when you yeah, were Yeah, I thought about it. Did you ever uh come like did you ever come to grips and understand like Ex take accountability for the role you play, or was it like you had no choice because it's either me or them? Now, I thought about that. He was a young young man. Respect. They didn't have to go down like that. But it basically was like a reflected action. A lot of things we do out on the street is basically reflected. 
We don't put no whole lot of thought in. That's a fact. You just do them. You know? That's a fact. Man, Rudy, man. Yeah. <laughs> he told like he's smooth guy. <laughs> so, so that happened, right? Now, you said it a couple of minutes ago that when you were involved in the streets, and you know, you was with stick up kids, they rob the drug, you know. Stick up, not kids, because they were adults. They rob people. Your portion of the drugs, you'll sell it. You realize that drugs did better than robbing people, so you went that route. Right. Now you go in that route, and how did you become more involved in it? You know what I mean? Like, how did you upgrade from doing that, like robbing for work, to actually purchasing big work, or did you rob for? Did you have a come up? No, I went away for eleven years, almost. Damn, years. what? Almost 11 years at 17. When I come home, I'm like 27, late 27. You went away and, for the for the for the, mm, for the for the joint, right? I only got five years, but when I got in, you know, uh, it's like a jungle, you know, in the jungle, the law of jungle. Oh, gee, so ask me if I know, Rudy. Kill. I don't know. I don't know. You tell, tell me, tell me. Kill. You know. <laughs> no, 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 no. You tell me. Yeah. What happened in prison? What, why, why you got more time? Yeah, I got. Uh, I got 10 years, 10 years for temp murder on another prisoner. And then they sent me to another spot within a year. When I got down there, it was an incident. Let me tell you briefly about the incident. Please. Uh, there was some revolutionary brothers down there. Okay. You know, and I was drawn to that. Prior to meeting them, I was reading about the revolution and this and that, slavery and all the stuff we went through. They put us through all the way back to slavery. And of course, I was pissed off, you know, about that. So one night, on the day we were supposed to get sheets, we turned in sheets, and they was late with the sheets. So they talking about locking in, and we still don't have our sheets. So everybody's like, nah, we ain't going in until you give us our sheets. Mm -hmm. Don't go in, you know. Say, all right, we're not going in, you know. So it started out with maybe 30 of us. So the officer called the goon squad. They run up on the tier. They got sticks, all kinds of stuff, you know. Getting them sales and all that. Getting them sales now. Where our sheets at? Just get your ass in them sales and shit, you know. Mm. Don't worry about that, you know. So everybody start peeling off. Well, you know, and I'm the only one out there. I'm not getting in the cell. I already took my stand. You, mm -hmm. I ain't tucking my tail. So I'm the only one out there. They rushed me. They rushed me, pushed me down on the floor, dragged me off the tier, took me down, lock up. Once they get me down there, they started hitting me with the handcuffs. Fortunately, I had a bush back there, <laughs> you know, so they didn't bust my head, you know. And they really couldn't get me because we was in a little, like, a little, like, uh, area when they take your lock. It's mm. real small, you know. And they was big, you know, so they couldn't do no damage, you know. Right. Then they take me in a cell and put me in a cell the same night, about an hour later. I see a shadow. I'm looking down. I'm sitting on the bed. My head, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, I got to get these guys, you know. I got to get them, you know. So uh, I see a shadow walks up in front of my cell. I look up. It's a big deputy dog looking white <laughs> lieutenant, right? Name Shoemaker. I look up. He said, uh, you see that? See, that's what happened when you uh when you, you uh refuse an order in my jail and all. Uh, mm. See, that's what's gonna happen, you know. Don't you don't refuse no order in my jail. I'm looking at him like before that I didn't know who I was gonna get. Now I know who I'm gonna get, you know. Say, all right. So they uh they gave me fifteen days, fifteen days up, they come and get me. Take me out to the population, got the hall where they store your stuff at while you're in the hole. 
take me in there, and they was like, get your stuff, right? And I said, no, nah, I don't need it. He said, you don't need it. You go in the population, get your stuff. I said, I don't need it. He was like, look, you're going to need your stuff while in population. What you going to do? I said, you going to leave it? And they got tired, and they was like, well, all right, just leave it in there. And they took, took me and put me back up where I was at. You know. I see the black guys, was like, I need a knife. You know. Oh, man, let that go, man. Get him on the street. You know. I'm not trying to hear that. When I get out of the street, I'm going to forget all about him. Mm. I get back out there, I'm running wild. No, I'm going to get him right now. Because you know. I felt like and nobody doing nothing to me and getting away with it. You know. So... They wouldn't give me a knife. So I go to white boys. Some of them was pagans and your motorcycle riders and shit. Say, I need a knife. You got a knife? They say, yeah, what size you want? You know? I said, something, something not too big. I need to hide it. <laughs> so they gave me <laughs> a knife. Box. And so that night, when we go to the dining room, right, for the evening meal, mm -hmm. I go to the dining room. As soon as I walk in there, I look, I see him in the middle of the floor directing traffic, shoemaker. So I said, mm-hmm. So I got the knife down there. So we get, I get all the way up to where I get my food. You got a tray, a metal tray. So I get the, I get the tray, I pull the knife, put it under there, under the tray. And you don't sit anywhere. Back then, you don't sit anywhere you want to sit. They direct you. As you come off the line, sit here, sit. You fill up a table, then you fill up another table. You know? So, all right, I come off the line, right? There's a couple guys in front of me, sit here, sit there. Now, it's my turn, you know? He said, sit there, right? I'm still walking towards him. He said, sit there, sit there, you know? And walk towards him. Then, when I get close up on him, he looked at me, I guess he... A flash of memory, you know. It was too late to run it. So I slapped him in his face with the tray. He tried to run, run behind him, stabbed him. He slipped down. I was on top of him. But the only thing that stopped me was I seen the guards from the, you know, stop it, stop it, you know. And I seen them coming, right? So I jumped up, you know, turned towards them with the knife. I was like, come on, you know. It was like, put it down, put it down, put the knife down on. I was like, nah, come on. I told you, motherfucker, don't put your hands on me. <laughs> so, like, they was like, put the knife down. You know, put the knife. I said, I'm going to put it down, but you put your hands on me, I'm going to get you. They was like, we ain't going to do nothing to you. They took me to the hole, then they put the handcuffs on me. They was trying to get me out the dining room so fast, right? Yeah. You ain't get nothing happened to you from them? Yeah, I got uh, charged with that. Now they got charged, but they didn't beat you up? No, when I got back, no, they ain't beat me up, no. Shoemaker. They was apologized to me the whole time. They was like, what'd he do to you? What'd he do to you? <laughs> That's crazy. So. <laughs> I forgot what you even asked him. That, that, nah, nah, that, nah, that, nah, that nah, answered nah. the question? Oh, I mean, yeah, it did. It did. Okay, so, okay. so that got you more time? They got me, what, three years or something like that. Okay, because Shoemaker's. I represented myself on that. I was in the hole for like three years on that. And. I, they told me to court. I didn't trust the system. You know, I got 10 years in the other place for attempt murder on a dude. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a lawyer. He sent me a lawyer, public funding. My people was like, I asked them to get me a lawyer. They was like, no, nah, we, we, we bankrupt. You bankrupt us. We just got you off this. Got you, we, you know, you're going to have to go with the public funding this time. We don't, we don't have it no more. You know? so I took the public funding. He came see me, right? And he gave me, when we shook hands, he gave me three fingers. I didn't know what it mean at the time. He gave me three fingers. Later on, I found out what it mean. It was a racist. It's racist? Yeah, it was a racist. Hagerstown. The Maryland, real racist back then. You know? And so oh. I found out what the three fingers mean, meaning go back to where we were three-fifths of a human being. Three fifths of a man. That was a legal wow. Supreme Court opinion. He basically uh, went through the motions with me. Oh. And I ended up with 10 years. 
And I started out with five years. So, so hold on, hold on. Why, why did you put hands on the guy in the prison, man? The, the, not, not shoemaker, the guy before that that got you a tenure. What happened? Oh, that was when I got up to Hagerstown. At the five years, end up in Hagerstown. It's like young boys up there. A lot of youngers. Everybody vibing for reputation. And, and uh, it's about who, who the best nigga and all that, right? And I'm new back up there, even though I knew a lot of people, because we had parallel careers from the juvenile places up into the adult places. So we are men, men, old friend. We walking in the day room, talking. He bringing me up to date on what's up and who's who in the joint. And, uh, so while we walking. Like a couple other guys from downtown, the Murphy Home, the projects, right? They think they the toughest dudes, you know, in the joint. So we walking up and down, and they walking towards us. I go to move out the way, this dude walk right in, into me. Right? So I go back to him. I said, You realize he bumped me just now? He said, Yeah, I know. So what? I said, yeah. I said, bump me again. You know? So we kept, we walked, walked back down. He bumped me again. You know, so everybody in the in the day room got knives somewhere. You know, they ain't got them on them. They got them taped under the, the benches or hid behind the TV or something. You know, so my man had a knife, and I had a homeboy had a knife and all. So we went straight at him. You know? we went straight at him, and I ended up, you know. The dude was a stand up soldier though, you know, he didn't testify. So I'm he thinking, did. yeah, I'm thinking like, I'm gonna beat this. I ain't got no witness. And uh, I go to court and the guard stepped up, said he's seen the whole thing. I'm thinking you can't press no charge if the dude ain't press no charge. But they pressed charges, the state took it up. The guard came in the court, said, yeah, I seen the whole thing. You know, he played it play by play, yeah, the whole yeah. walk, bump, the walk, bump again. Yeah, and it was a, a judge. Everybody was racist in Hagerstown. In the jail, they'll call you a nigger in a minute. Really? Yeah, they call you a nigger like it's uh, everyday uh, uh, conversation. The police? Yeah. Hmm. Real racism. They out and out racist. It's a different type of racism than the feds. The feds, it's not in your face racism. It's more deadly though, you know. It's more deadly than because they work hand in glove with the white inmates. Mm -hmm. They want you dead. They will give them knives or whatever, you know. And they would, uh, they would assign you to a block where it's only white boys in. You know? It's deadly in the feds. The racism and it's just beat up, you know, and fights in the state, but in the feds, it's murdered. So, five years for the murder, manslaughter. Right. You cashed everybody out. I mean, they had to get you, whoever they paid, manslaughter. Right. Go up there, you do the bumping thing, bong, bong, bump. Ten years. Ten years. It runs concurrent? Yeah, concurrent. Yeah. Not concurrent, consecutive. Consecutive. On top of you two. Tell me, sorry. Thank you. Okay, so now I got 15 years. 15, okay. <laughs> now, then you go, you put hands, and you poke up Shoemaker. Right. Okay. End up with three years for that. Three years I for that. I represent myself in the court because I didn't trust no lawyers after the, the three finger thing. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I was ignorant then. I was like, I'm never going to be ignorant again, like Never. So then never now. Sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. Finish. I'm never gonna be ignorant again. I'm gonna have knowledge like an equalizer, you know. Any situation, I wanna have the same knowledge as you if I can. I want more knowledge you, right. than you have. But if I can, I wanna at least have the same knowledge that you have. That way, if you shoot me some bullshit, I know it. <laughs> you know? All right. Three fingers, you represent yourself. Three years. So now where we at right now is we at um, 
Uh, 18 years, it seemed like to me. 18 yeah. years, yeah. Yeah. So, but you did 11. I did 11 more than you. All right. And there was no more after that. That was the last, Shoemaker was the last one where you got charged. Yeah, Shoemaker. What happened is, uh, yeah, I got caught on that one. That wasn't the last one, right? But, uh, <laughs> That's why you got caught. Chill, chill, chill. Now I got our wising up, right? Yeah, because yeah, I can wise. tell. I can tell. I was more, you know, calculated. Back then, it was just like on and popping. Reckless, yeah. Yeah, if you, as soon as immediately, you know. But uh, Do you think it's because you were light-skinned with green eyes that you were picked on? Or they tried to pick on you because you wasn't picked on because you put work in. But do you think they tried to bother you because you was light-skinned? You know, black power was... I was small. Uh, not, I don't know about the light skin and green eyes, but because I was small. I really wasn't picked on, you know. And then I had a little reputation from... Everybody know you from Boys Village to... Got it. Victor Color, and City Jail, Juveniles. Got it. The streets too, you know. So, no, it was just a rivalry thing, you know. Got you. Because they said that, you know, you know they, they make joke about light-skinned people. You know what I mean? They, these days, yeah, you're growing up, yeah. they make jokes. I don't know if it was like that back in the days. It was, it was. Okay, but you were... Especially you, the you neighborhood I was from, Park Heights, mm -hmm. back then in the 60s, it was like a better neighborhood, you know. Got it. The family doing a little good, they moved to Park Heights because mm. they had porches and the trees <clears throat> and all. Still free white people, you know, in the neighborhood, you know. And it was known for pretty boys, dressers, and the players, you know. Wasn't well, no gangsters up there, you know. And what category you was in? <laughs> At that time? All of them. At that time, I, I really wasn't a, uh, I was known from East Baltimore, right? I was pretty much known for East Baltimore. If people knew me, they knew me from East Baltimore. What are you talking about? What category? Like you said, you said the What category dress. was I in? Yeah. You said dress. Was I the pretty uh, boy. boy. Like, you know, you know, know what you said. No, I wasn't pretty boy. Uh, well, yeah, say what you said. You know what man. you said. You know what you said. I was the dresser. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course you were. Smooth guy. I like this guy. Dudes would go over to jail from Park Heights, and somebody asked them where they were from, they would not say Park Heights. Because mm. Park Heights didn't get no respect. Didn't that, you couldn't name a known gangster, you know, like certain areas, say like, say like Harlem, you know. Everybody know the gangsters, it's like Underwood and Prezo and all them. And, uh, so they would be like, name a gangster from Park Heights, and nobody could name one, you know. Mm. I was young, I ain't, that, that shit ain't mean nothing to me. I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but one thing about if you touch one of my homies from Park Heights, man, I'm, I'm living up Park Heights, I'm from Park Heights. Mm -hmm. You touch one of my homies, we go on the war. You know? Put hands on them. Yeah, we go on the war up in there. So we had wars up in there. Now Park Heights is the worst neighborhood in the city, y'all. Really? Yeah. The neighborhood that and you they got the reputations. That's where all the bad guys come out. Park Heights. Yeah. So so speaking of reputation, yeah, you know, I wanted to know like at what moment did you you feel like you got that respect from from your from your hood? Like at what age or what moment something happened you was like, Yeah, this you know, I'm that guy out there. Oh. I was seven, eight years old when kids used to come to my friends and all, they get in a fight and all that, you know, and um, they would run to me, you know. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you you don't really, uh, death ain't real to you, you know. Right. It's just like watching the movies and all that. You know, you, you're really in the movies at that age. You know? You're looking for something larger than you. An adventure, you know. Right. So... Far back as I can remember, you know, that uh, we would go in other neighborhoods and be attacked and all that. And we would fight, you know. And they knew that I wasn't going to run, you know. I'm not leaving you there, you know. If the 30 dudes attack us and all, if you don't run, I'm not running. If you run, though, you the last one I'm running too. Mm. <laughs> but I'm not going to leave you there, right? So, so I was always known for having a heart 
So, were there any gangs in the in that town at that time? Any gangs? Yeah. No, nah, they was loose associates. We were the gangs, but they didn't have names and stuff like you know, like BGF, Crips, and Bloods, and all. Gotcha. So like, you come home, and now, like, what year do you come home from that eleven year bid? You said it was the seventies. You come to 80, 82. eighty-two. Now things, you know, like things have changed drastically. The drug game, it was like crazy. While I was in, I learned that it was like more corporate. You know, it was moms and pops then, but now it's a franchise. It's big. You know. The uh, the dope dealer got the vanish now. You know. They killed off all the dudes that used to be in the gangs and the bandits. and uh, They had handguns and drug dealers. They got machine guns, bulletproof vests and all. They organized. They ain't out on the corn no more. You know, it's a few dudes out on the corn. But they got stash houses. And they got, like, a division of label. You know, it's real corporate now. You know? But when you come home, who you, like, how, how does it work for you, man? Because... You know, I'm looking at you know you was, you was into some stuff, man. So how, I mean, how does it how did how do you get back involved? While I was in it with the young dude out of East Baltimore, that was getting money. He had nice cars and jewelry and all that. And I met him while I was in. Mm. He was passing through. He had a couple years. I think he was going to camp. And. On their side, it's a fence. They can come to the fence and talk, mingle with the population, the prison population. And I worked in the dining room, so I can come when they are eating. Their side called Dionysus. I can come up there, you know, mingle with them. Like, ooh. This young dude, he uh, he was getting money in the street. He had a reputation for getting money. Yeah. So... He, he had some money, pocket money. He gave a guy like 20 hours to get him a couple carts of cigarettes. And the guy, you know, just ran off with the money. He's a dope fan. Didn't give him the money. I heard about it. Went to the dude. Told him, that's my nephew. Let me get that money back, you know. And I got it back. Give it to him. He was impressed by that. So he said, look, when you come home, man, Get in contact. Matter of fact, I should be home shortly and all. This is my father's address. Write to me. You know, if you need help with a lawyer or whatever, you know. So, oh, I ain't take it serious. So they transferred me uh, from the pen to Hagerstown, which is the lesser security place. A lot of them youngest from East Baltimore that knew that I looked out for them, they was like, man, you better call him. He get money out there, you know. Sent me some pictures, you know. And they pulled them out. Mercedes Benz, they got on fur coat. They in the clubs and all that. Call him, man. He gonna, he'll look out for you, right? So uh, I took my time. I finally wrote him. Sent it to his father. I told him I need 5000 for the lawyer, you know. Didn't get no answer, you know. So I was like, okay. But when I got out, I'm hearing the same thing. Better catch up with him. He get money, you know. He be at that club down there where all the big shots at, you know. So I get my girlfriend car, you know, little elite, Ford elite, <laughs> 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 and goes down there, you know, looking around, and I finally see him, right. So I'm sitting at the uh, stool. He's sitting over there. He like, what's up, man? I act like I just happened to be there. I'm not looking for him. You made it home. Yeah, yeah, you know the conversation. He's like, man, you come home at a good time, man. I just got a African connect, goat herder in Africa, but he got all this, you know, me and my brother, right? Say two weeks time, right? You know, we're going to be all right. All right. So he say, right now, I ain't got too much. So he give me like, let me $300 worth of dope. He said, like, you sell that, man, you can get yourself some, you know, some pocket money, you know, in case you need some soap or something like that, you know, for the two weeks, you know. He said, but uh, if you want to do something before the two weeks, you bring back the money on that. And this. 
you know what I did, you know. So they said, brought the money back. <laughs> I ain't waiting on no two weeks. Facts. <laughs> yeah, so I was in, you know, it got on, you know. Eventually, you know, they had it. Back then, you talk in 83. 83, everybody didn't have an African connect like that. So before you know it, we was flooding the town, you know, with 